So I recently got my first question from a YouTube subscriber. Ex explain how a DNA double helix is formed. I got zero marks on this question, even though the meaning was correct. My teacher said my expression was not confident. Can you please tell me how to answer this, or any other long questions accurately, please? So I can answer the second part pretty quickly. Um, uh, any other long answer questions, they can be answered by practicing them a lot. Um, but I'll make another YouTube video for this afterwards where I'll explain different aspects of questions that you should address or at least think about when you go about answering them. But that's for another video. Let's look at this question specifically. Explain how a DNA double helix is formed. When I look at this question, in my opinion, it's a very vague question. And I think of two different things when um, I look at it. So firstly, which is the easy one, I think of what is a DNA double helix made of? As in, what are the nucleotides which are within themselves? What are they composed of? Um, and how is DNA formed from the nucleotides and their constituents? The second thing that I think of when I look at this question is your teacher might actually be meaning explain how a DNA double helix is formed from DNA replication. And that's a different topic once again. So they're, all, they're related, of course, but it's a different topic uh, as well. So what I'm going to go through today is... I'm going to go through the f what I what my first interpretation of the question. So, DNA double helix formation in terms of its structure, not in terms of replication. So, bearing that in mind, DNA double helix. So, well, let's draw this down now. So here's our double helix structure, and you've got the rungs of this twisted ladder, which is which are these lines in between. Now, this is, these, the things that make up the backbone of the double helix structure is the sugar and the phosphate, sugar and phosphate. And if you look closely in here, uh, if you were to say get a, a big magnifying glass and have a look closer, what you would see is you would see a five, you would see a pentagon, which is your, um, which is your ribose molecule, or deoxyribose molecule rather. Now connected onto that would be a would be a phosphate molecule. And these will keep on repeating to form the backbone of the DNA molecule, etc. Okay, so this is just one side. So what this one represents, what this represents is this bit over here. Of course, you've got the nucleotide or nitrogenous base, bases as well being adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, and they're over here. So when I think about formation of a DNA double helix, what I would start off with is that DNA... I would start off with the definition. So DNA stands for... deoxyribose... ribonucleic acid. That would be my first point. I always like defining things at the start. And the second thing I would talk about, or the, th the second thing that I do, is that I draw this structure here, except make sure that it's a double, uh, a double stranded molecule. So I'm going to draw that just over here on the left. So the deoxyribose sugar and phosphate molecules 
make up the backbone of the DNA molecule. Okay, so that's this one and this one. Then I next talk about the nitrogenous bases. So that's these guys here. So in this case, this might be an A, this might be a T, this might be a C, this might be a G, and they, these bonds in between, they're usually represented as dotted lines, and that means that they are hydrogen bonds. There are Final thing is that covalent bonds exist between the... Um, so that's these solid lines. So they exist between sugar and phosphate, phosphate and sugar, and sugar and nitrogenous base. And look, I haven't answered this like the most uh, elegantly, but the purpose is that if the point is that if you draw a diagram and you explain everything that's on this diagram, you won't miss anything when it comes to the formation or the structure of uh, the DNA double helix. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Sally. And if any of you other guys have any questions for me, I I will try to answer them. I mean, I'm getting a bit busier now, especially with my work starting next year, but I will see if I can do my best. Okay, thanks. Bye.